All right, Butter. Welcome back, man. How's it going? It's all good. It's good to be back. Oh, bro. Yeah, man. You know, our last interview did some pretty crazy numbers. I think we shocked the internet a lot. You know, uh, the feedback was pretty great. It was pretty dope. You know, uh, the, the fans love your take on things. I'm glad we can run it back. You know, you know I, I honestly... I enjoy I enjoy the time out, you know what I'm saying? I enjoy the, I I like to come out, you know what I'm saying? It's always a good vibe, something positive going on when I'm, when I get near you. You know? Yeah, for sure, man. Well, you know, I thought we start off with probably the biggest news that happened since last time we did an interview, man. It, it the interview wasn't that long ago, but so much has happened since our last interview, man, and you know, that's a uh, you know, rest in peace FBG Cash, man. You know, uh, you know, what did you think when you heard about everything? Like, I ain't gonna lie. When I heard that shit, it it, it was like it was a fucked up. It, it it was a fucked up thing, you know. Especially with me and Cash squashing our beef, and you know what I'm saying, putting all the differences to the side. Not too long ago, right before it happened, so you know, it definitely it it, it hit different. You know, it just show you like life short and shit like that. Yeah, man, that that was real shit. You know, I I got to interview him a, a few months a few months before he passed away. You know, a, a really dope num uh dope interview. He had a you know big future ahead of him. You know, he was yeah. just actually, you know, just really starting get, to take off he musically. Just started, started to get him old. Yeah, man. You know, he picked up where the bully left off at. Boom, bro, he was getting him old, definitely for sure. How'd you hear about cash passing? You know, uh, all our family real close, you know. My mom, his dad, you know, we all grew up together. Years, like, we got all our, our family, we all grew up over 15 years together, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, that shit, it spread throughout our inner crowd fast. Yeah. Were you surprised when it happened at like five in the morning, six in the morning or something? If you know Cash, oh bro, you know that's that's Cash. Cash, he 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 a groovy dude, bro. Like you know, he he a vibe, on bro. Shorty, he was always the life of a party. Whenever he, you know, what I'm saying when he in the room, you know, he 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 a vibe, he was a vibe in that bitch. I'm granny. Like last time I was with him, me, him, young pops. You know, what I'm saying my manager team, well my old manager team, we all we all was at the bar and shit. Cash is in that bitch buying it, buying everybody shots. Um, bro, we in that bitch tweaking, stepping with the old people, with the white folks. We's having fun. Okay, man, that's what's up, man. Sounds like you guys had a good time. Yeah. One of the things that happened after our last interview, which came out as fake news, but I don't think it was intended to be fake news. I think the bloggers just kind of got the story a little bit wrong. So, I, you up. know, I'm, I'm I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt, you know what I'm saying, that they ain't do it on purpose, that it, w it was just a mistake, which which happens, because I make mistakes too, Tell you know me. what I'm saying? I, I, I report things a little inaccurately sometimes, and, and it's not intentional. So, you know, I, I think it was just a mistake, man. But, you know, they they uh, reported that you got arrested right after the interview we did. Now, like, now <laughs> You know was, what I mean? It was it was like good the day I got locked up like two days later or three days later, something like that. Cause I did the interview with you when I shot the interview. I mean, I shot a vid I shot my video new Glock, and then uh, the day after new Glock, I went to jail. So yeah, it was like two three days after the interview. Oh bro, the only thing was I still had that hoodie on. Different outfit though, cause I'm bro. It was a different outfit for sure. Fucking getting that. Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, I don't think they really, uh, you know, intended to do it, man. How, how long were you in jail for? Like five, six days. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't even that long. It's like, it was like, it was like four days. Five, yeah, like four, five days. It wasn't that long, huh, bro. I had it. went to court, got a bond, sat like a day. Day and a half after I got my bond, I was home. 
do the police treat you any different when you're a little bit famous? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Because had I, had I not been who I was, you know what I'm saying, with the whole situation, I, it wouldn't have played out how it played out. But me being who I was, you know what I'm saying, the police reacted the way they did. So, you know, it's a good, it's a good and bad thing to be slightly famous, you know what I'm saying, or just with any type of attention behind your name, especially coming from Chicago, you know what I'm saying, and I promote, I promote crazy shit sometimes, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to the internet, so I can see why people take certain type of, you know what I'm saying, actions when they see me and shit like that. Do they like be like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying, FBG Butter and you know, yeah, hell yeah. All that, all that shit still, that shit, all that shit still amaze me when it comes to people. Period. And um, bro, I run into people. Motherfuckers be like, "Hey, you that dude? You uh, yo, what's your name? Butter? Yeah, hey, you FBG? What? Hey, your sister Cairo? You know what I'm saying? Hey, I just watched your video. That should be cool. But you know, hell yeah, that should be decent. Well, uh, speaking of the police, you know, did you oh, see yeah, the we video? Oh, y'all talking about people. Oh, no, oh, yeah. Man. The police knew who I was on first grade. They ass crazy, bro. On first grade. People crazy. Okay. I thought we, I, on first grade, I'm, tweaking, I'm, talking, I'm thinking about people. I'm talking about the people in general. I forgot we was talking about 12. Hey, yeah, that bitch ass people, they be acting like dickheads on Tuga. It's cool, though. Cause I'm stay out their way. I know my right. Granny. Grown as hell. Well, speaking of police, did you see the video where Boosie was going off on, on the cops? Hell yeah. <laughs> What'd you think? You know what I'm saying? Honestly, when you know your rights, you know what I'm saying? You 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 got the right to say certain shit. You got the right to react a certain type of way with law enforcement. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of us don't know our amendments and our rights when it comes to interacting with the police. You know what I'm saying? Period. Like, at all. You know? So, for the ones that do know what know, know their rights and shit like that, like Bootsy, them, you gotta think about it. Them, that man been in jail a long time. That man went to jail for a long time. That man was in that study in the law. He was in that bitch trying to get appeals and shit like that. Was not trying to get, he, he was in that bitch fighting for it. To get his life back. So you gotta think about it. People like him, and that's a lot of it's a lot of black, whites, uh, whatever color you might be, but people who go to jail and and go in that bitch not only study their rights, but they study in their case. And in order to study your case, you gotta study your rights. You know what I'm saying? And they come home and they feel like shit. You ain't gonna treat me no lesser than what I what what I know I'm supposed to be treated as a human being, as a person, oh bro. And that, that that's like that's that's the only plus to come from jail, cause a lot of niggas go to jail dumb as hell. Oh, bro, come home but have a little sense to him. He said he has been stopped seven times in two weeks. You know, is is that something you you kind of got to deal with a lot? You know, that much being stopped. You know what? I don't even get stopped that much. Oh, bro, I don't. You know, I'm not. Uh, what I'm gonna say? What's the, what's the? I'm looking for the proper. I don't be. Oh, bro, I don't be outside all the time. Fuck it, that's what I'm gonna say. I don't be outside, bro. I don't be getting. I ain't gotta worry about getting pulled up. I be at the crib, man, or doing something positive. And when I do be behind the wheel, we license it insured. Oh, bro, and I be. I gotta. I gotta fucking drive at this point. Oh, bro, I ain't. I'll never be behind the wheel. So, huh? Okay. Have you ever been that mad? You know what I'm saying? At the police for harassing you? Hell yeah. When I, that was when I first came home. When I came, first came home, 2019, 2020, that was the police harassment. Like, that's when I was really being harassed by the police. You know what I'm saying? And, but I was fresh out, so I had to understand and figure things out with the law and okay, the police doing this and stuff like this going on. Well, how could I prevent it? You know, and that was my whole. That's my whole thing. Like, 
I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to stay out the way and prevent things. How can I prevent that from happening? How can I? That's that's how I'm gonna move. So yeah. So you just started moving a little different. When you move different, different things happen, on bro. I, you know. Yeah, that's real shit, man. A headline I've been seeing a lot lately that I mean it's always been around in Chicago, but you know it it had a real big spotlight lately. Was uh, you know people kind of been you know bringing up Tuka. I know Tuka's mom. She did an interview with Say Cheese, and you know some people were kind of mad about the interview. Um, you know I think I think they felt like you know it was it was a little emotional and you know a, a little tough interview, man. You know what do you think about everything? I mean, honestly, they're like. You gotta think. This been going. Tuga been there, going on what, for like, thir thirteen years almost, some shit like that. Twelve years, thirteen years, and nobody never knew how his mama truly feel unless it was an older person, people, moms and people, dads who was running across his mama. You know what I'm saying? And now, you know what I'm saying? She really just had a real moment to to voice. For people to hear her voice, to hear her pain behind what people say on her son. Because you got to think about it. Her son went a uh, uh, assassin or nothing like that. He took one killing people. Folks one, you know what I'm saying? So it hit different. You know, it hit different when a person who don't be on that, who, a person who ain't going to slide to try to kill somebody or a person who really like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll be over here in this area, but I don't, I don't really, you know, I ain't, he wasn't really in the mix, took a, wasn't really in the mix like how a lot of us was. So for him to lose his life to what was going on, it hit different to his loved ones. And his name get slunted to the point you people would be like, well, well who took a kill? Well, who did who who did he harm to make people all around the world say they smoking Tuka or saying fuck Tuka? What did he you know what I'm saying? It, it, it had people thinking, or well, for the people who use their brains, it make you think like, damn, what did Tuka really do to deserve to be disrespected to this point? And he have not done nothing. And his mama, she still she still here. His brother still here. His sisters, his loved ones are still here. And they gotta deal with the disrespect and the the taunt, cause you know at this point they 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 antagonizing his family when they say they smoking took or they saying fuck took or oh yeah shit like anything that bad with his name like you know what I'm saying his family gotta uh, hear that see the reactions to that and that can hurt us somebody mama. You, her son gone. He ain't here. How did the whole Tuka smoking on Tuka thing start? Cause of us. It was a good thing though. Like when when we said when we were saying we were smoking Tuka, we were saying we were smoking the good weed because before Tuka had passed away, you know it was dro. On the scene, but then the loud head just hit the scene. The real, that real loud when it tasted like baby powder when you hit it almost. You know what I'm saying? That shit had just hit the scene. And that's what Tuka wanna smoke. He, that ain't the loud, folks. That ain't the loud. And so I stood up, I was like, oh, man, what that is? That's that's loud? Motherfucker, you know what that is? That's the Tuka, folks. Cause that's all sure he wanted to smoke. He wanted to smoke some loud. He wanted to smoke that shit that tastes like baby powder on oh, Granny. You know, a lot of people have really came out, you know, over the years and really defended Tuca, you know, like Duck and, uh, you know, a, a lot of people, you know. And, you know, recently Tusi came out with a TikTok video where he was kind of, you know, rapping a King Vaughn song where he kind of talks about it. And, you know, Ruga, you know, jumps in and, you know, kind of checks Tusi, you know, saying smoking on Tuca. And, and kind of says he's gonna smack him when he sees him, you know. You know, how do you feel when you see like dudes who aren't from Chicago going off and, and saying stuff? I ain't gonna lie, like when I saw when I saw two seat when I saw that like, shit with two seat, I, I felt the type of way too. Because one, motherfuckers claim they they street niggas, they know what's going on in the streets. 
I'm a street nigga. If I fuck with a certain type of artist's music and he say he smoking his dead ops and that song, I'm not gonna be on the internet rapping that lyric. You know what I'm saying? I I rather say my dead op name or something before I say another nigga. I don't even know them. I don't know them. I'm a street nigga, so I know if I diss his dead homie, if a nigga diss my dead homie, I'ma get on that. You see what I'm saying? And if we street niggas and we ain't got nothing to do with this war. I'm not for the diss they did, homie. I ain't even get myself involved in, in they war. I'm not even from out there. That's real nigga shit. But you got a lot of these niggas is artists. They dick riders on first grade. They wanna, they wanna be on. They feel like, hey, maybe if I say this or I do this or I fuck with this person, I can get this far. That's true. But at the same time, you can still do all that without getting involved in what shorty got going on. I can fuck with, I can fuck with a certain type of artist. And he could be in tour with whoever. But just cause I fuck with him, I ain't in tour with his ops. You want, cause what have I done to his ops to be in tour with them? What they done to me? Well, I'm not your enemy. Oh, um, bro, you ain't diss my dick, homie. I ain't dissing yours. You ain't slid on me. I ain't slid on you. That street nigga shit, real nigga shit. I'm a man before I'm anything. So I'm not dissing nobody else there, homie, that I don't know. Feel me? I'm dissing the niggas we killed. When I, I you know what I'm saying? Well, he did kind of walk it back and said it was just a TikTok video and that, you know, he doesn't really speak on the dead, you know. So, you know, I, I just kind of want to put that out there that, uh, you know, I don't think he fully apologized, but, you know, he kind of responded, says he doesn't speak on the dead. Why do you think people kind of singled Tuka out to go after him the way they did? I mean, his name catchy as hell, honestly. You know, and... Keith did it. Overall, Keith, the motherfucker who he promoted, took a took of this, took of that, smoking took of this, and smoking to fuck took of this, fuck took of that. And a lot of these people, a lot of the, the younger generation grew up under Keith, you know what I'm saying? And they grew up listening to what he had to say, you know? So it was, it was it's like natural to the new generation, but they don't understand. How deep that shit really get playing with somebody dead, homie. Especially a motherfucker you don't know, cause you I can diss a nigga dead, homie. I don't know nothing about them people. Any one of his homies can walk up and do anything to me, cause guess what? I don't know these people. And these people don't know me, but guess what? I just said something about this man on on on, on the internet. And anybody could anybody could do something to Tusi. It, it, it ain't gotta be Ruka in particular. It could be anybody. Because a lot of people love Tuka. It's a lot of people who Tuka got uncles and shit that work for radio stations and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Anything can happen to him. You know what I'm saying? For How did you meet Tuka? We all low end. We all came from the low end together. Me, Tuka, a lot of us. A lot, a lot of people from my hood, we all stayed in the projects together, and we all just ended up in the same and on the same blocks after the projects. Did you guys move out of the projects, or did they tear your projects down? Our projects got two down. I, I think two thousand seven. Uh, yeah, out at B Wells, the stenches. That's oh, thirty nine. Okay, I see. So, so a lot of people kind of moved from there, and and. A lot of you guys kind of moved to the same area. Uh huh. Either either our way or in Parkway. Mm, okay, I see. We talked about you getting locked up, you know, a minute ago. You know, what's it like when you run into your ops in jail? That shit. I don't know. I be I'm I on took I be on beast mode. I'm first grade and I'm not a bully because I can fight. I use my hands and my feet, so it's like. Oh, Tuka, I, I really get busy. So when I run into ops in jail, I'm, what's up? You feel me? I ain't going to, if you ain't on that, if I don't know, and a lot of ops, I don't be knowing niggas. I don't be knowing niggas. Niggas be, oh, you know who, you know me? I don't know your ass. Oh, bro, and a lot of that be going on. And them the niggas who motherfuckers end up fighting in jail. Like a lot of my fight suburban ass niggas. Niggas who, oh, yeah, my homie, woo, 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 from the O. Oh, you met him in jail. This your jail, homie. Oh, bro, you want to get beat up for your jail, homie? Other than that, I run into the ops for the most part. When you run into the ops in jail, the ops be cool. I took it. The ops don't be 
on that unless it's on Tuka. I ain't never ran into a BD by himself that was on that except for bruh bruh. Oh, Lil B Gray. No, I never ran into any other BD I ever ran across from Rondo to D Rose on Tuka. Lil Ice from 600. Anybody I ran into from 600, O Block, any of that. If it won five or, or four or more, they want on that. They on BD. I'm trying to. Do, I'm trying to beat my case. Woo woo. That's what all. That's what all niggas say. And I'm aggressive. I I know I'm aggressive. I get real aggressive with niggas. Oh, bro, what's up, boy? You know who I am. Cause if I know who you is, I want to make sure you know who I am. What's up? On Tuka, you what you trying to do? You want to bump? And nigga, a lot of niggas don't be want. Niggas can't fight. Niggas got guns. That's, you got to think about it. a lot of people. That game bang right now, they game bang because they got a gun. They ain't, they, a lot of people weren't game banging when we had to fight and we was linking up to, to kick ass. When we was linking up to spank that rump on folks' grave, a lot of niggas weren't game banging. You see what I'm saying? For real. You got to think about it right now, ain't nothing but kids game banging right now. And the kids is aggressive as fuck. And all they know is guns, kill, gun, pills. Drugs. I'm mean, folks great. They live. They they live in a fast life. They don't care if they crash out today. They don't care about what they mama gonna have. A lot of fuck can't even get buried proper. They don't care. Oh, um, bro. So you got it. I, I like kicking ass though. Yeah. Yup. Yeah. You right. mentioned you ran into Rondo number nine in jail. They jumped on us though. They motherfuckers ain't want to fight one on one. On folks grade. You know, but for the most, you know, when we ran into nine, before Face World them was on that. Oh, too. I, I, I really hate was on folks grade. Because, all right, but look, we ran into, now it's me and my little cousin, Booger. Booger from MOB. Free Booger Lou. The real Booger Lou on folks grade now. We come, now, uh, Nine, nine on uh, he on uh two H, I mean uh two F, on Granny. We we just get kicked. We just get kicked off two G. Me and Booger, it's me Booger Pig. It's two times from 051. Nah, we all we all they split us up. Half of my whole bid. I that's who I was with. Two times from Young Money, Pig bitch ass. Me Pig Booger, uh Binky from Red Tape Game. Motherfucking North from 051, Kiki. It was on took it. We really had it. We really, it, it was really beast mode. On, motherfucker ran into the people I was with. I was moving around. On, on, we, we, we were splashing with this bitch on my grandma. And we want to shoot the one. But me and Booger, we come up, we, we fall on deck. Now he out there by himself. He on the phone. He see Booger. Booger get that on Junebug on Scrap. What's up? Now, like on Steve, hold on, I'm gonna come talk to you. Woo woo, now I'm on the phone. Now, I sit down on the table. I never, I never even took my shit to the room. My, my, my motherfucking, all my shit still sitting at the door. Whole bedroll, all my belongings, pitch, everything sitting at the door still. Booger dragging his mat to the, to the field, dread swing, fat. This bitch, his dreads right, like right here, jaw jaw. So this big bitch, he just walking his dreams, like big ass demon. He walking, dragging this man. He on Junebug. I'm, he on Scrap. On the Drake, nigga. I'm finna splash his ass in this bitch on Junebug. This bugger. I'm getting out. I'm all right. I'm all right, folks. Come on. First grade. He get your shit. Take your shit to your cell. I'm boy. Hell no. Nah. I'm gonna leave my shit right here at the door. You tell me you for the fight, shorty. I'm gonna just leave my shit at the door. On first grade. Now I get off the phone. Him and Booger go under the stairs. They talk and whoop. Him and Booger get throwing hands on bro. Ah, come on, I go over there. Nah, him and Booger fighting. He grabbed Booger hair. Booger like, on June Bug, on Scrap, get this bitch off me. T oh, you on June Bug, boy, you tripping. On Scrap, this bitch got my hair. Ah, go over there, boss him. Take off on, I take off on nine, nine, fall on, bro. Now we got him on the stairs, me and Booger, we, 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 we whooping him. Toga, short enough for face where I come jump over the over the rail on us on my dick run on it jumping over the rail they, these little bitch pop out they sell they 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 out there they that shit oh we're on face whoa now we all on the stairs motherfucker fight on crack they 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 kick our ass though it was nine of them on job time they ain't overbeat us though took all that spitting and butt that cause that's what was going on when I hit the county.
That shit was heavy, heavy. Now that shit watered down. Now you spitting the nigga ass in jail on Tuki, you gonna get you gonna get a case on my grandma. And they gonna charge you with a sexual assault, cool. Oh bro, you you my butt. Hey, none of that shit happened to us on bro. It's a simple fight. Booger lost like 14 dreads. You know what I'm saying, but these niggas pulled out all my dreads on on them J. But yeah, that shit was that was little shit on um, bro. He got that ass whooped though. Took her. We spanked that butt. Oh, great. Oh. <laughs> like, a lot of niggas be hoes though. Two people I ran into that on my on my sister Gray. Uh Shorty named Savage. I don't know what on my sister. Don't know who he is. Never saw Shorty on my life. On my dead sister. Whole time I fucking come out. He really from like the birds or some shit like that. Rudder, rudder, rudder. But he OTF. Woo, woo, woo. I'm what? Don't know him. On my grandma, Shorty try to spit on me on two gray folk. Try to spit. Boy, what? You trip. Boy, I, I try to stab that bitch up on little bit. I try, I try to kill him and all. Uh, boy, who you? Boy, is you cool? Boy, I'm walking around with this blick on me and this bitch on Jaja. Butcher you and this bitch. He try to spit on me though, and uh, at the midline. I'm my grandma. I try to poke his ass up. They saw my stupid ass in the hole for sixty days. I'm um, granny, but him, Vaughn, on took a grade. I'm not a hater, for, I, don't, I don't be lying on niggas, for. I keep giving niggas they credit, for, Because I just be wanting niggas to do the same for me, for on my sister. But Vaughn coming that bitch, I, I come, I'm, I, I just fight one of the BDs from Dog Pound. Named Trey, little skinny, goofy ass nigga. I don't even know him. But he on some BD, over BD shit. Tell me, yeah, you my op. Ooh. Who? I'm boy, I don't even know you. Who your op? He you. Ooh, where you from? I'm from the pound. I'm you from the pound. He, yeah, um, I'm gonna took you on a bump. He, yeah, ooh. I'm gonna scrap. We gonna stay. I slut him out. Oh, my grandma beat him. He stop. Stop. He on beat. Get him off me on David. I can't breathe. I don't took, I, but don't touch me. I don't, I'm in that bitch. I'm trying to bite that whole ear. He crying. He tripping, little boy. What you doing? I'm in that. I was tweaking with him though. Him, but now though, Vaughn get that. I come, in, I come in the hole. He on oh, BD on oh, Kitty. He come in my cell. He on David. I'm on Tuka. Let's do it. He, you got some food? I'm yeah. I'm boy. I got my whole. I'm boy. I got my whole commissary bag. I'm boy. And I got drugs. He what? Um, yeah, I got pink panties and nanas. I get them bitches. I got a bundle. Oh, took them. We gonna get half fight and eat on my sister. He. Oh, Kita, let him in there. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, took the COs come in. They get that. Hey, y'all got to keep separate. Woo, woo, woo. Davon, Ben, and, and Wilton. Yeah, it's a separate on y'all. We got to move you about. We got to move you about this bitch. He on thing. Woo, woo. But other than that, and Mumu, goofy ass, on oh, fourth grade. Lil Mumu, he was front. He was really just. He was really chasing attention, though. On Shandia Gregory, cause I'm in a hole. We all chained up. Blue box on, on Lil B. We like this, we cuff like this. Blue box on, Ch chains wrapped, we shackled up. He wolfing. He, yeah, whoa, whoa, stay off of the beat you, woo, woo. Shorty trying to break out the door, mid line come around. The med tech lady, she come walking with the med cart, she go to they cell, she get on they meds, he trying to break past the security guys and shit, trying to get out of his cell. I'm mean, you funny as hell. You he know we on the ERT deck too on Lil B Gray. Now you know you're not finna get out the cell with these green suits, bro. Why you even front your move? Like that's what you're trying to do. He I'm like, I, I boy, you just want some attention. I'm who is you? He you know who I am? I really did know who he was. I was just fucking with him. I'm talking. <laughs> I know that cause that shit will blow me. I so I, I'm I'm really fucking with him. I'm boy, who is you? Ooh, ooh. He on Steve, boy, I'm finna beat you. I'm boy, who the fuck is you? You study time out. Who is you, Goofy? He bought his Mumu. I'm who? He Mumu. I'm who the fuck is Mumu? He Inky D and Manny and them brothers. I'm who? I'm who, the, who the fuck is Mumu? I'm first grade, born him. I'm on the phone though. I'm on the phone. My baby mama. I'm on my phone. With my baby mama. She get that. Why you arguing with them goofy ass niggas? Ain't you already in the hole? Woo woo. I'm he in his cell. He really just talking on folks. Woo. But yeah, them niggas don't be on shit in jail. I seen you mentioned that you could get a sexual assault case for spitting on people. Yeah, for spitting in people's booty. You feel okay. that gay shit? I'm a judge. 
niggas, uh, what's the shorty name, man? He just came home from jail. It was like, yeah, man, they, those niggas in that bitch. I was in that bitch, they spent, niggas spending. No, bro. Niggas do not want that case, G. No. Motherfuckers be already in that bitch fighting murders, all type of shit before getting that. Who want a sexual, who want a sexual assault on their case? You, on, on they, on fighting a sexual assault. Uh-uh. Nobody's doing that dumb ass shit no more. That shit got played out the moment they passed that law in 2016. I took like it was in like July. They yeah, uh, they doing DNA tests on niggas. If you sp if you knock a nigga out and the nigga say he got his ass spit in, they they swabbing niggas asses. And if your DNA came back and do shit, boy, they whole case, whole new case, whole new charge. Oh, um, bro. Motherfucker don't want that shit. Motherfucker that man shit, boy. I got a chance to beat my case and go on. So this is something that used to happen a lot back in the day? Yeah, uh, it was like 2015 and like the beginning of 2016. But by the time it came, like July 2016, your ass is going, your ass is getting a new charge, boy. You pull your dick out on the CEO, on a nurse. Get a new charge. You spinning that nigga ass, you getting a new charge. I um bro, I was in a red suit though. I had a staff for sauce. So huh. I ain't no I ain't trying to do none of that. Man, what? Niggas walking around that bitch. They green suits. Oh fuck, see me get caught. I'm coming that bitch red suit on, chained up. Staff assault, ERT. On folks great ERT taking me to court. Ain't hey, nothing like it. VIP treatment, if you ask me. <laughs> Too great. VIP treatment, if you ask me. On oh, my grandma, I ain't got to ride the county bus. I ain't got to sit in the bullpen. None of that. On oh, grandma, they come to get me out my cell. From my cell, straight to court. Sheriff cop. ERT team, boy. How many times did you see this happen back in the day? Did you see it happen a lot? Yeah, yeah, I was in a hole when it, the nigga who started this shit, on my sister, <laughs> they gave us a last 27 years. No, for, they gave him 47 years on scrap. He was a little bitty from uh, Chicago Heights. He like, uh, he come back, they, he get found guilty, we in a hole, he on bitty. He on bitty, folk. On oh, David, they just gave me 47, folk. He on beat off for the knock a nigga out and spit in his ass. Now everybody laughing this shit, motherfuckers. Motherfucker, cause he 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 was a little goofy ass shorty, always cracking jokes. Oh folks, great, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, Ja Ja, he walk up on shorty on the phone. He, hey, hey, let me see that phone, boy. I need to call my people. They just gave me they just gave me a 40. Ooh, ooh. Shorty like, man, boy, though, I just got this bitch, boy. Ooh, he on beat, boy. What you wanna bump over that bitch? Shorty, you know what you wanna bump? They. He rock him, bam, 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 pick him up, slam his ass on top of the table, slam his head on top of the table, and little B grave. It was murder, she rolled. And on folks' grave, shorty hit the floor. He pull his pants down, spread shorty asshole, spread shorty cheeks, and spit it in his shit on little B grave. He on BD, I just told y'all. How for the knock a nigga out spin his ass? On Jaja, after that happened, everybody had to get them some. On folks' grave, that shit was like, on. Niggas in jail is stupid as hell. When one person started a trend, the next nigga think of the next thing to do to go viral in jail. That's why a lot of these niggas come home, go viral, and die. On not took it. For real, for real. That's just the truth, folks. Niggas be in jail chasing it. Big Eski on my grandma from, from No Limit took it. Shorty got the, he got the, he got the mitts on Lil B. He was dressing shit up on my dead sister. He, dude was in that bitch beat niggas ass on my sister grade. And he didn't, it was like anybody from 051, he catch, he was scratching their ass out. Anybody from Jaro he caught, he was scratching their ass out. I ain't gonna lie, he was kicking folks in the ass in jail. I don't took the grade, folks. But folks them was kicking his ass too. And they caught him. Bro hitting his ass trays, crates, all type of shit. But dude hit on oh, my grandma. That's the nigga I don't took. I, I sat on deck with him for like 
five months on took grade, but just watched him pe whoop niggas ass. They going on the stairs for the commissary bag. Folks grade, I'm betting on them. Folks grade. What? They $100 bags, $200 bags, a commissary on Tuka. Going on the stairs, let's go. Get it on. They really, niggas really kicking ass. And uh, the nigga from out west, uh, Junior, my dead sister. Shorty little ass, was putting in one no fights on Tuka. One no fights. When my grandma niggas going on the stairs for them commissary bags, he real live, two, three pieces of niggas, put niggas on their ass, in the fights, putting them to sleep. On my dead sister, I'm loving it. Division now, fight night Friday, under the stairs, on my dead grandma, I'm loving it. You got a dice game over here, niggas got a batch of hoosh just came off. Somebody getting their ass kicked over here. Oh, bro, I'm loving it. I was, what? I'm in mean, that bitch gambling, I love to gamble. On fourth grade. I'm on a spade table, I'm shooting dice, playing poker, and I'm betting on the fight. I ain't fighting though. My grandma, I'm light skinned, boy, I look good. Well, it seems like it goes down in jail, man. You know what I mean? Hell, niggas be that bitch trap. <laughs> I'm that bitch high. Pink panties. I'm off the pink panties, getting oh, I'm gonna eat faxes. Hooch. Ain't none of that. Y'all tripping to this bitch. Were you locked up when Doug passed away? Yeah, I had one back to jail. That bitch done the pop holes to the crib. <laughs> <laughs> oh, first grade. Yeah, I had went to jail. Yeah. But I ain't that's much. I went to jail because I was being an ass. I was being an idiot. I was being an asshole. I was outside with my house arrest box riding around in the car. I was at all the parties. I was in love with that bitch. Niggas ain't even know I was on house arrest. <laughs> I was out there in the streets. They locked my dumb ass up. 275 unauthorized movements. <laughs> yeah, though. But now, though, I was in jail, though. That shit fucked me up. Yeah, what was your reaction when you first heard about it? I ain't believe that shit. It's merch. I'm like, yeah, that shit cap. I'm like, he don't even move like that. I'm like, who they who 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 they say he was with? Cause I was in NRC, I was in Stateville. And uh one of uh one of Duck one of Duck Daddy's sons, brother, big brother, he he was an older guy. He came, he was like, uh, he like, hey butter. I'm like, what up? He like, uh, boy, they just killed Duck. Downtown at the Gucci store with a bitch. Ooh, ooh. I'm like, you said what? He like, yeah, man. He like, I just got the phone, my little brother. He like, man, everybody downtown right now. Woo, woo, woo. They had Northwestern, right, 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 right. I'm like, man, yeah, that shit cap. I'm like, who was with him? You know what I'm saying? Now I'm like, who was with him? You know what I'm saying? And he got my attention to my folks dead. But I'm really just thinking, like, man, that shit really just all talk. Feel me? He like, man, he was just with him and the bitch. They was downtown, downtown at the Gucci store this morning. I mean, hell no, nah, cause I'm now I'm thinking about all the times since I've been home since 2019. Duck love to go fuck the Gucci store up downtown. I mean, damn, I'm tweaking. I'm talking about 2013, 2019. Um, bro, but uh, think about from 19 when I had came home, how he moved. Yeah, he loved that Gucci store and. The Christian Dior store on my dead sister, but he always moved like five, six motherfuckers well. All blitz. On fourth grade, so I'm for like, oh yeah, Duck was with a bitch by herself. Um yeah, that shit cap. Duck don't even he don't even ride around with a bitch by herself. Duck always keep at least two or somebody. He it's Duck and somebody and at least two other people all the time. So I'm like, yeah, that shit cap. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like five, six o'clock come. But you know, I'm a state field. I'm behind the wall in our seat. So five, six o'clock come, our, our phone tag come around. So they pass the phones around. I get the phone, should I call my mama? You know what I'm saying? My, now my OG like, uh, man, that shit true, son. Rudder, rudder, rudder. My baby mama know. Now my baby, I call my baby mama. I'm like, man, you good? Ooh, she like, yeah. She like, she was fucked up. 
she was just screaming and hollering in the phone. I'm like, yeah, that shit true. I told her, that shit broke me. That shit, that shit crushed me. Oh, um, bro, that shit crushed my spirit. It crushed me as a person, for real. Like, because since I've been home, it, it ain't been too many people that's that been true to, you know what I'm saying, who they is on um, bro. I'll, I'll, I'm, I ain't fucking with true because Dude said what he said, or you and dude and two and then dude want you out the picture. Motherfucker trying to shut you out the gate. And that was duck, that's how that was duck whole thing. You know, duck like, oh shit. I see motherfuckers trying to trying to try to trying to knock you down. Motherfuckers trying to keep you from getting where you're supposed to go. Oh, but I he won for none of that shit. He bitch, you know what's going on. Because Duck was still one of the few. Who be like, oh yeah, I know what you did for the hood. I know how you coming when it comes to the hood. Oh, bro, you know what I'm saying? It just, at the end of the day, you know, the situation is, it, the whole thing flawed, no matter how people speak upon it, you know what I'm saying? From the day motherfucker went to jail, our whole situation was, was flawed, so. Were you surprised at where it happened? Hell yeah. Don't nobody go sliding downtown for real. Nobody trying to kill nobody downtown. Motherfucker, no, like, oh yeah. It's a slight chance I'm gonna go to jail if I do this shit down, this downtown. It's po it's normally police is on every corner downtown. Or on feet walking. I think about where, especially in that particular area, you, for the people who really enjoy the city and Really go downtown and enjoy that area. Everybody know, like, okay, that's one of the the hot one of the hot spots in the area where even the tourists that come to the city go there, take pictures down there, walk that pathway. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, hell yeah, that that was a big shocker. What was the reaction from the inmates when they found out the duck had passed away? I ain't gonna lie. NRC, NRC was sad as hell, but it was like, well, at least until I was on, motherfuckers like, damn, that shit crazy, woo woo. Motherfuckers, everybody was on that bitch rapping duck, all, and everybody was just, just rapping they, they particular duck songs or duck versions, verses they knew and shit like that. And uh, it was one goofy ass nigga, he was on, he knew that we had, nah, we had yard in the morning. But he knew he was finna get ready and go to his his primary joint before right before we go to the yard. So you know he and that bitch he get to get disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? You know how that shit be behind the wall. Gallery niggas be on the gallery. Well, you probably don't know how it be, but niggas be on the gallery behind the wall and they feel like oh you ain't never catch me because it's for it, you got to think about how the galleries is be like. The Lord Gallery, there's like, I think it's like four levels, five levels of NRC and one house. A house, F house, shit like that. And niggas be like, oh, you'll never see my face. I'm talking to you behind, I'm talking to you on a whole nother floor. We'll never be out together. And that's how a lot of a lot of niggas is, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of them niggas be suburban niggas. And I ain't got nothing against the suburban niggas. But you a suburban knight for a reason, bro. You know what I'm saying? Be a suburban knight. You feel me? And a, and a lot of people don't understand that, like out of town people. I'm from out of town. I'm not gonna be dissing nobody in New York. You feel me? I'm not doing that. I'm not probably I'll never see you. What am I dissing you for? We ain't gonna bump heads. Cause a lot of niggas don't be on what I be on and I don't be on what niggas be on, period. I seen you mention before that the newer generation kind of doesn't follow any rules and that like, when you guys were young, if you caught a dude with his family or his mom or something, you'd give him a pass. Yeah, mandatory. Mama, kids, grandmas, even with certain women, you know what I'm saying? Women, motherfucker like, oh, okay. You know, you, you, you got that. But now it's like, shit. Motherfucker. Kid with your kid, and it, it come down to the older, the older. It come down to people like us too. You know what I'm saying? 
Because a lot of the time, it, it don't just be the shorties. It be us overly grown ass niggas too that indulge in this shit with these shorties. You know what I'm saying? If you notice, if motherfuckers really paying attention right now to population, for every, for every fucking 16, 17, or 19 year old that go to jail, it's somebody 30, it's a, somebody from 25 to 30 with them on a case. For real, for real. And that come from a lot of the, a lot of us. Uh, we well, for, uh, cause I'm finna be thirty in about two years, but still I'm kicking thirty in the ass, bro. And you ain't gonna catch me. And I do be with the shorties though. I you, you do catch you. You can't catch me with the shorties, but I ain't sliding with no fucking kids. I don't, bro, cause I don't want no nigga slide with my motherfucking son. Slide with my son. My son slide. I don't want my homie to be in the car. Oh, um, bro. Feel me? Because we, we supposed to be outgrowing a lot of that shit, bro. And a lot of this shit can be prevented, bro. Well, if a lot of a lot of us older people speak up upon that shit with our shorties. But right now, shit, at every hood, the shorties and the older niggas into it. Because the shorties hot. All the shorties hot right now. All over. Folks grave. It ain't just in Chicago. It's all over. It ain't just in our hood. It ain't just in the ops hood. The shorties all over, all over, all over, all over America right now. They, 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 they the ones that's really getting some real. They like they chasing that, 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 that wave. They trying to get to us, steam us, robberies. You gotta think about it. These little bastards out here is ruthless. Why do you think things got so messed up? Like, like where did it all go wrong? between your generation and the new generation? So many people died. Um, bro, a lot of, and what I mean by so many people died, I mean by as in a lot of these little boys grow up admiring a certain type of nigga in, in, in their neighborhood, in their community, right? Why ain't, well, I'm, well, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna re rephrase. New generation, a lot of a lot of the younger guys look up to a lot of older guys. You know what I'm saying from the community, and they want to be what he what he, they they want they want to do what he doing, and the that person to lose their life. Maybe it might be their big cousin or per, just a person they look up to, their big brother. You know what I'm saying, and. They'll they'll lose their life to this shit. And these little these little boys, they feel like, oh yeah, oh you kill my you kill my brother. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a die I'm a die trying to kill one of y'all. Or I'm a, oh I'm gonna spend the rest of my life in jail. And that's how a lot of and, and a lot of these young boy a lot of the younger guys they're experiencing the same shit we was experiencing when we was young. But they experiencing this shit firsthand. They experiencing this shit like never before. Cause right now a lot of these shorties be in the car with they big homies. They big homies dying. They big brothers dying in front of them at parties and events and shit like that. And that shit is traumatizing to a young man, especially if I a lot of a lot of young people shit like that happening. That shit have fuck with his brain, his mental. A lot of them, they barely can think anyway. You see what I'm saying? So seeing somebody die, just losing a loved one or somebody they love, they feel like, oh, okay. Now what can I do to, to avenge that person? And they really to risk it all without any care in the world. One of my interview clips from out of Chicago recently went viral. And it was a real big story and I kind of, I didn't really expect it to take off the way it did, but it, it, you know, for some reason it was just one of those clips that just, it kind of surprised me. And I interviewed corporate recently and I asked him about Steven Jackson checking into O Block. And, you know, he basically said that like, nobody can check into Chicago and that nobody's good in Chicago and that there's no big homies in Chicago to kind of, uh, you know, make you safe there. It is though, but it ain't. And I say, and I say that, and the reason I say that because you can always go to a, a hood with a big dog, right? 
And granted, in that hood, you can't get touched. You won't get touched, right? But you gotta think about it. The city, though, no, because you got different blocks all over the city, different gangs all over the city. Now, if you go to somebody's hood and you check in with they big dog and you good in that hood, you got to think about a lot of hoods fuck with a lot of different hoods and shit like that. And people generate and mind towards hoods. Motherfuckers leave their hood and go hang in another hood more than they hanging in their own hood. And that motherfucker can do something to you too because he feel like shit. You good with them. Not with me. I do something to you right now. Go back to my block. These your people. Mm. So, th yeah, that's an understatement. People got, yeah. Because he could have, okay. motherfucker could have went to O Block with dude and still got robbed. You got to think about how many people do still get robbed after they check in or still fuck with shorty numb. Motherfuckers get poked. And they show a lot of love too. But you got to think about the majority of the robberies and shit go on through who? You know what I'm saying? Who robbed they motherfucker got to think about it. So of course niggas go, motherfuckers go get up with the niggas who they gotta worry, who they feel like, oh yeah, they gonna be at this event. Why not get up with them? Why not fuck with them? I'm gonna run into them anyway at this event, and it's a slight chance that these niggas might rob me or kill me and take my shit. And a lot of niggas, a lot of people don't be wanna risk that, especially going to nobody else's city. You see, Perry, you see, taking them down. P Come on, man. V Roy poking shit. Taking niggas. Uh, Y'all motherfucker gotta really just think about it, bro. Shorty them was really taking niggas to taking niggas down, down. And they was taking niggas with real money down. 20, 40, 50 racks, 100 racks here. They hitting real licks. They, they in the mix. Yeah, but that's an understatement, though. Niggas ain't good in the city. You could check in with one one crowd and then die by the next. Mm, uh, okay. Well, I thought we'd get into Jaro a little bit, which I don't really see a lot of people really talking about him too much, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? There's not there's not too many stories about Jaro out there, man. You know, what was your whole experience growing up right there? Like, with a lot of... You know why you don't hear a lot of stories about Jaro because it's not a lot of it's not a lot of young people that could tell a story a real story of Java Smith because a lot of the a lot of people who from my area wasn't in my area in two thousand and three two thousand and four is the year he passed away but motherfuckers went in our hood in ninety eight motherfucking tell you what job is hot every Friday he come out on the corner from Aberhart to Vernon and give all the shorties. Dollars, fives, and tens. Get off the corner. Get the fuck off the block. This is how all the shorties from Jaro ended up on standing on the corner of St. Lawrence in front of the corner store because our big homies making a motherfucker move around. We skin the heights. We bringing the police to the block, huh? They getting all. They getting us a couple dollars, huh? Y'all go get y'all some chips, some juices, or something. Go get out of the niggas. Get off the block. And respectfully, that's what we was doing. And Jaro, kind hearted man. Oh, bro, he loved the kids. He, anything, job is love the kids. He loved kids. Every, his parties and shit, they still throw, like, they, they still throw parties and shit where he used to throw his parties at on Vernon in the back blocks. Well, not, they don't still do, but they was doing it up until a certain point where everybody just don't see eye to eye right now. But, Motherfuckers threw parties where Jaro threw his parties. He threw parties. It's his birthday, but he threw parties. And it'd be like he throwing parties for the kids, the block parties and shit. Icy cups and ice creams. He buying out the motherfucker. He get the ice cream truck and had that bitch sit on Vernon. Pass the ice cream combs and shit out to the kids. That's that's the man I knew. Is that why he was loved so much? Hell yeah. Five. And what what year did Jaro pass away? Two thousand four. Two thousand four. Okay. And you know how did he pass away? He was killed at a nightclub on his birthday. Wow. 
a lot. See, a lot of people don't know, like Gyro Day come around. That's why, and that's another reason why Gyro Day is so special to a lot of us because it's his birthday, also his death day. You know what I'm saying? So that store you were talking about, was that like a hangout spot? Hey, for the shorties. Okay, so when you, so when you were real young, that was the spot. Yeah, yeah. And and Ojara was like your OG, kind of like schooled you to a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he uh, you know what I'm saying? He he always had some some wise words for us though, like you know what I'm saying? What y'all out here for y'all? Like he'd see us out all posted on the corner. What y'all out here for y'all y'all? Y'all jugging, y'all. But what, what's going on, y'all? What y'all selling drills? Y'all doing, y'all? He wanna know why y'all? Why we hanging on the corner instead of getting some money? That was his thing. Mm, okay. A while back, I interviewed a lawyer called C L R Bruce Rivers, and he was telling me that the feds are heavy in Chicago. The fed. And, and yes, and then right after that. There, be, there was some more Ricos in Chicago, man, you know. And most recently, Young Thug and them were kind of arrested on a Rico. And, you know what I'm saying, they kind of brought up his lyrics and everything. And, you know, a lot of people are, are kind of mad about the lyrics being used to, to kind of indict him and everything. Uh -huh. How do you feel about all that? Man, I had just said, I had, I had just spoken upon this. In an interview, not too, like a while back, like I think this is maybe, maybe like three, four interviews back. This is probably like at the, maybe the beginning of this year or last year. I was explaining to motherfuckers like how conspiracy work, felony murder work, the Rico charge work, and I was like, you know what I'm saying? Some of this shit we get, we get to the police on the platter. You know what I'm saying? With the internet, with our lyrics, right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? I've been I've been paying attention to the curve though. See, it's that straight line, but then it's always that curve. Oh, bro. With them getting arrested and facing such serious time, you know, do you kind of feel like rappers are being uh, attacked right now? I mean, honestly, you could say that, but then you got to really think like, okay, what what is what what this particular rapper might be doing to be getting attacked. He might not be doing nothing seriously to be getting the attention that he get, but what you portray is what people is all, is, is all a person know. It's, it's all a person can feed off, especially when it comes to you being a rap artist or just any type of artist, or, you know what I'm saying? With any type of like fame or any light, social media, like whatever it might, whatever the case might be, you got to think about it like, if I watch you on social media and you act this a certain type of way, a motherfucker would be like, okay, that's that's you. That's that's you as a person. That's what cause I, I I'm only I'm only getting I'm only taking what I'm getting. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna take from what I'm getting out off your demeanor. So and a lot of a lot of them artists don't even really probably they don't even be living that shit. Some of the best rappers, the drill rappers probably ain't never killed nobody. Ain't never did nothing. But guess what? They sat around enough people and been around long enough to, hey, I can rap about this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it might have amazed them. Nah, they ain't going to go out and do it. But it, it it amazed him so he can speak on that situation. He feel like he speak on it fluently because he studied that situation. But that ain't how it worked, though. Do you feel like the Rico kind of just comes with the streets at this point? Hell yeah, eventually. But you know they chasing the they chasing the money. Like like I keep telling my folks, the feds. It, it, one team could really put the murder put a murder gang put a murder gang down right, and uh, they they probably send the state after them to convict them, but. When you got a murder team and y'all playing with money behind that shit, they want the, the you gotta think of it, the feds want that money. Oh, bro. Cause they feel like, hey, if we can stop you, 
we can we can we can slow the crime rate down a little bit, and make ourselves look good too to the public eye. Because anybody who playing with real money, and you game banging or you still in the streets and you playing with the bag, bro. Granted, the Rico gonna come behind it because if you still in the streets and you got the bag, you gonna end up still doing street nigga shit with the bag. Because it's a habit, it's natural. I'm still in the habitat. See what I'm saying? You see Keith? Keith got his little brick. Granted, started a lot of shit. He started all this shit in Chicago. That boy gone. He gone. And he barely dissing. But he know he started. He know, oh damn, I'm the, I'm, I'm the cause of this right here. But he ain't stand 10 toes behind it. He can't stand 10 toes behind it 10 years later. Because he, he decided to make a smarter decision. And a lot of people got to at some point, especially with money. Because if you if he still been out here, Keith would already be dead by now. Because Shorty liked to party. He liked to get high. You know what I'm saying? He liked to be jiggy. He liked to, get, he liked to go get fly. Shorty going to hit the stoves. Motherfucker bound to catch him at a stove. Catch him getting high or something. He riding his form on bro. And he felt like, hey, I'm going to leave. I started what I started. I'm gone now. That was a smart move. How do you feel now that uh, Chief Keith has stopped dissing Tuka? And he's publicly said he's not going to diss Tuka. And I believe I even seen him get on somebody for yeah. dissing Tuka. Yeah, he checked one of his fans on his live. They came up, he's like, you know, he boy, I'm too grown for that shit. I saw that shit too. That's real thug business though. You gotta think about it. The, 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 the reason he was dissing us so hard, the niggas who he was dissing us for betray, betrayed him. They snaked him out, right? So it's now it's like, damn, I done started all this shit slightly, but at the same time, the people who I thought who's supposed to have my back, who I'm supposed to be riding with, they they crossed me. So he felt like, shit, I ain't out there anyway. They die, they die. You know what I'm saying? He moved on. He put his big boy pants on. He had to raise all them goddamn kids. Bro. Real G shit. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. You know, uh, one of the bigger news, well, not bigger news, but some of the news surrounding drill rap that I kind of seen come out and kind of hit the blogs was Joe Buttons said that he believed that drill rap was going to be over soon and that he felt like it was going to be over because basically the government was just going to come down so hard on drill rappers. And the way the government did come down hard on drill rappers, but at the same time, you know what the problem is? Man, certain shit don't work for certain niggas. So they, p people talk down on a situation because that situation didn't work for him. You see what I'm saying? Joe Bun been on, been in the industry a long time. You feel me? And you gotta think about it. It's younger people, way younger than him, coming in and came in the industry, came in this game to shut this bitch up, and it made more money than Joe Bun can ever grow. Probably get at this point right now, cause he down there knocking on fifty. You see what I'm saying? But a miracle could happen for him. But right now it ain't happened for him. It ain't happened for him for a long time. Yeah, he got a little light, but you can't talk down on 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 on, on drill rap because what you decide to do didn't work for you. Do you feel like you know, like if one drill rapper gets arrested or something happens that it's like. You know, there's a lot of people, a lot of drill rappers seem to blow up. They do. They fucking go to jail, come home, blow up, end up back in jail. Oh, um, bro, because these court fees are motherfucker. I'm um, bro. And I ain't rich. I ain't, I ain't got no money. I ain't first grade. I'm a child's boy. I'm broke, but look. But court fees are motherfucker, boy. I'm um, bro. Fuck us. Yeah. Some of the other news that was kind of surprising, I think, to a lot of people was 
French Montana came out and he said that record labels are taking life insurance policies out on rappers. Did you see that? No, I ain't see that. I ain't see that. But shit is believable though. You gotta think about it. majority of the time, a lot of these labels, a lot of artists be like, yeah, they 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 go, they be saying they so pro independent. A lot of the time, artists just be hot to be independent because don't know label be want to pick them up because they be like, hey, look, you a liability. And a lot of labels feel like shit. If you a liability, we still want to work with them, but you a liability. We sign them and, and take out a life insurance policy. A lot of people avoid record labels because they feel like record labels are dirty. You know what I'm saying? They kind of makes it seem like this looks a little bit more dirty for them. I mean, when it comes to labels and shit like that, if you know your, if you know, if, if you understand what you signing yourself into, a lot of people don't understand that shit. A lot of people don't take time to try to understand that shit. A lot of people put their faith in other people. Like, okay, well, I'm gonna put my faith in this person and we gon' cause they feel like that person might have their best interest. And a lot of time everybody had their own motive behind things. People people come into your life for many reasons. You know what I'm saying? Some for season. Some be, you know, it 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 all depends on the God put people here for reasons though. If a record label came to you and they said you had to sign this insurance policy to get the record deal, would you sign it? It depends on what this insurance policy, what I'm signing it up, signing it for. Cause like, honestly, I got my own life insurance policy now on my on myself. And rightfully, if something was to happen to me, my life insurance policy is for my kids. So hell yeah, if it was. If if it retain my kids, seeing majority of the, of the life insurance policy, fuck yeah. Cause that'd be some I, I know like okay cool anything shall happen to me y'all it be straight even though money money don't mean nothing for real cause my daughter she out of mama, so you know I, that's why I strive so hard to stay alive. Oh bro, because I'm her only parent at this point. She got her grandmas, her aunties, her godmoms and stuff like that, but ain't nobody like her mama. And if something was happened to me, then what, well, damn, my mama and my daddy gone. You know what I'm saying? What what type of burden what do I really want to leave behind on my mom and my great aunties or my, you know what I'm saying, my 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 baby mama, mama and them, and her, they people. You know what I'm saying? Then that, that'll fuck my daughter up in the long run. Like, damn, my, my man, my daddy gone. You feel me? Yeah, well, some of the latest, you know, sad news out of Chicago that I know kind of hit you hard was uh, FYB Trigger and FYB DJ. Yeah, man. You know, um, I, I, I'm, I think you were close to both of them. Yeah, uh, yeah. FYB DJ, my boy. Trigger, my little brother. Man, bro, uh, I just want to say sorry for your loss, man. I know that, you know what I'm saying, a homeboy and a brother, you know, Cash, which we talked about earlier, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, how, how'd you meet, uh, you know, DJ and, you know what I'm saying, I know Trigger was your brother, you know what I'm saying? What what was it like with, with everybody? Yeah, I met, I knew DJ from from Newtown, from I be well too. We, he, he another person that came from, from off the low end. Me, DJ, Duck, Shondell. There was a lot of we all stayed on the low end together. Went to either Price or Doolittle or something like that. We all went to school together. Okay. And uh and what about Trigger? You know, that little fucking evil, you know, my evil that my evil twin has a lot of cry. You know, he pretty just a vibe on first grade. You know, I, I guess Trigger had a a pretty notorious reputation. You know, honestly, he only did what people allow him to do. To, I, I'm folks great. If you a goofy, then uh, I mean, honestly though, why do a goofy need a gun? You accidentally kill somebody. You see what I'm saying? 
ain't nobody out to kill you. You know what I'm saying? So why told it? To say you got one, then you actually did it to kill somebody. What? So I don't feel like he's doing nothing wrong. I think he's doing actually a good deed to society on folks' grave. You gotta really think about it. If you take guns from the people who don't need the guns, then the stupid shit don't happen. So in a way, he he was doing some bad, he was doing some fucked up shit, but then he was doing some good shit to society. Cause think about it. All the niggas who got they shit took. That goofy ass nigga could have went and killed somebody's son, kill somebody's daughter or something. Cause you know a lot of these niggas be killing themselves, killing these these females and killing themselves. So he might did some he might did justice to somebody. Dude was probably doing something crazy with that motherfucking guy. Felt like he didn't need that gun and took that bitch and got it took from him. Gotta really think about it though, cause the world really is a you know what I'm saying. It's a magnificent thing, bro. You know what I'm saying? For real, I was like, nah, let me stop. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm serious though. That was, he, he probably was doing a good thing. To me, he was doing a good thing to society. Cause we need the blicks. Do you have any stories you could share with him? Hanging out, having a good time? Yeah, yeah. He, he an asshole, he don't, like, he don't like going to movies and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But he, he, he that little bitch can bowl. He can bowl. Oh, um, bro. And, uh, okay. I know, though. I had a lot of a lot of good times with him. I want grandma. She was a little ass crazy. But some of the shit he be doing, you can't even do. You <laughs> I can't even talk about the shit the truck be doing, though, folks. Oh, granny, he tweaking. Funny as hell, though. The bad, hey, look. If you if 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 you did like do drugs, Zans, perks and shit, Vikes, that's your guy. That's the guy to get high with. He he, you know what I'm saying? For sure, you want to pull up, sip you some drink, pop you a bottle, and get high, be just high and vibe. Trick on my grandma, ladies man, on bro, very outgoing on two grade. You hear me? Like he come, he light out the room, on bro. He always. Smiling, yeah, he mean mug too, but he he always smiling. It he be he he really just try to keep a vibe going. He 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 he'll get caught up with women just 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 so everybody night go well. It's just to say it's like five, six, seven, eight women out here, and he feel like shit. I call five of their ass out here. It's ten bitches out here. He feel like I call four. You feel me? And. You know what I'm saying? And he loved to eat. I don't fuck great. Hungry bastard. You mentioned uh, FYB DJ. You knew him since you guys were kids. You know, what was it like growing up with him? Uh, bro, them used to be... DJ used to have his bully turn. You know what I'm saying? At all times, DJ DJ bully was turned on bro. Like, So, yeah, he cool dude, though. Definitely always had, had a ball. Big boy. And he wanna be in, he like to kick ass. Oh bro, he like to kick real ass. Bro. Uh just like this is they fresh me up. This like this like fresh me. This I was a sophomore with DJ and Little Real and all them was freshers and shit. And uh we used to just go up to the schools. Everybody meet up. We 25, 30 swole on a bus. Whole bunch of badass kids turning buses off. Kicking ass, um, bro. We end up getting into it with uh, damn, uh, hood hood rich. We end up getting into it with hood rich, on um, bro. They coming from uh, coming from down by. We all on the bus. Uh, the I I think they was calling him like Mo. He was a big he, big big boy, on um, bro. He be big boy on um, fourth grade. Him and DJ they get to get it on. We turn the bus. I was shorty from the. He get shorty. He 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 slight try to check us though. He all goofy ass shorties. Woo woo woo. DJ, boy, what? Oh, Shondell, who you talking to? He you. DJ rock his ass. They getting it on the side of the bus. Anybody who know, they know I always come with the snake punch while folks don't fight. I'm gonna cut props on. I call bam bus. He fall to the bus. Oh, folks, great. We insty all oh, attack his ass. His homie done run off the bus. Now that's part, now I tell you, we like 25, 30 swole. Now his homie them, 
It ain't not probably like five, six of them, but they ain't going. I ain't going front on shorty them. They want going. Oh, they try to stand their ground, and we turned the bus off on our block. So once motherfuckers saw the fight kick it off, you got to think about it. More motherfuckers from the block standing off those on corners and shit. They, fuck is that? Oh, that's full of them. Fuck, run it down there. So our crowds is getting bigger and bigger. And they just, well, we we, we kicked their ass, though. Oh, bro. A lot, <laughs> we kicked a lot of people ass. That's why a lot of people didn't, a lot of hoods, granted, I, I like I be seeing a lot of my homies like, oh yeah, man, our ops clicked up with everybody, our ops fuck with everybody, woo, woo, woo. Yeah, they do. You wanna know why? Because we was being bullies when we was kids, bro. And a lot of them, a lot of niggas still hold that, hold that shit. To you. Boy, them niggas beat my ass, boy. Them niggas, them niggas jumped on us, boy. Them niggas, and they motherfucker like, oh, he put me to sleep. They, they, they did this, they did, and we was going to parties. We would, it'd be a party in somebody else's hood. We'd out, catch the bus, catch the train, go to, we over here on y'all shit, acting like this side block, get into it with y'all, beat y'all up, probably, my fucking the party side, I had to shoot out all type of shit out here. All because when it come down to it, now that I think about it, we was being bullies. Oh, bro, we was doing shit that we didn't, we ain't have to do. Um, bro, we was just doing shit because we could at the, on a serious level. It's like, okay, yeah, we can do this. Who gonna stop us? Whoa, y'all wanna fight, catch us, kick our ass. Uh, rest in peace, peace to DJ, both of them. Both of the guys. You know what I'm saying? RP, DJ and Trigger. All right, PFYB, Trigger, long let me take your scrap, man. I don't know. So they know. Definitely. Just so they know. I see some wild stories come out of Chicago, you know? Some uh, you know, some pretty, some pretty, pretty, pretty crazy things, man. But you know, recently I seen a wild story about the y YNW Melly case, and in some of the paperwork that the police released, they said that he had proof that he authorized a hit on his own mom, and it, they went through his phone, and and you know. And that's what they found. What do you think when you hear something like that? Now, with his situation, now look, you gotta think about it, man. The right bag, he might have wiped. He he might have wiped his homie the mask. But I don't see. see even with him though, I still I, I still can't see. I love my mama on first grade. My mama, well, I call my mama right now. And, and get some money from my ass or anything. Watch my kids, anything, whatever the case might be, bro. I I, I don't know. That's some, that's some cold hearted shit, bro. Yeah, I feel like the cops will put some wild shit out about you, man. You know, just like they'll lie to you when they got you, you know what I'm saying, when they pick you up, they'll tell you all types of wild shit. And, and fuck you know what I'm brain. saying? And with Melly, too. They, he a big name rapper, man. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these police officers be chasing that shit. They be trying to, I like they don't want the clout, but they really be wanting the clout on my dead sister, like the nigga who locked me up, Freckles. He, yeah, you know who I am, but I know who you is. As soon as I saw you, I knew we was gonna find a gun in the car. Ooh, ooh, I bet at my partner. Me and my partner, man, I bet that we was gonna find a, at least one or two guns in this car. Cops definitely do it for the clout. They do it. The feds. Go after big rappers for the clout. They want to be able to brag. Yeah, I took down, you know what I'm saying, Young Thug and Gunna. And, you know, uh, the same way they used to do with the mafia back in the days. Some of the other news coming out of Chicago was R. Kelly getting sentenced to 30 years. A, a lot. Some people thought it was harsh. Some people thought it was justified. What would you think about that? Man, fuck that. Free Uncle Kim. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just, No, no. Honestly, I ain't got no comment. No, oh, 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 oh. That's kills, bro. Man, make some good music, bro. And you people, the, the people, you got to think about this, though. 
the, for the shit he got charged with. Why they ain't charged them people, mamas and daddies too? Shit, for, that's just that's real shit, bro. You fucking trafficking your child up. You sold your child, bro. Prostitu that's prostitution, G. Anywhere it go, because how everybody was saying, oh, R. Kelly was doing this, doing that for these these little girls and their family, right? I got a daughter. I don't give a fuck who you is. My motherfucking daughter ain't finna be sitting at your crib to my studio time. Oh, yeah. You gonna you make her a celebrity, huh? Well, I'm sitting there too then. Fuck is you talking about? It is shit over. She only got two, three hours in this bitch. Let's go. That's, that's respectfully. That's a real parent. Who the fuck letting they fucking 14, 16, 17 year old fucking daughter go over a nigga fucking 30 plus crib? Tell me about some. I'm going to record. I'm going to make some music. Would you? Fuck you got my. Would you? No, I, I wouldn't. I would. I, come on, man. We, uh, I, I ain't, I wouldn't do no shit like that. I wouldn't even let my motherfucker son go over a nigga crib 30 plus time out. Yeah, my motherfucker 14 year old son. Yeah, I'll be recording with him, daddy. Who, who, who is he? You know what I'm saying? Let me figure this guy out. Even though I, I feel like my, my child should be, uh, you know what I'm saying, smart enough to understand right from wrong. I know that shit's not right. You know what I'm saying? But you got to think about this, these kids, too, and this R. Kelly, and these little girls. You got to think about a R. Kelly, a lot of they motherfuckers, they fantasize about this man. A lot of these kids, you know what I'm saying, shit like that, when he was when he was R. Kelly with the bald head, R. Kelly with the braids. The young, the, you got to think about who was listening to his music. Who listened to the music now? Motherfucker got to pay attention. Like, you got to, motherfucker got to pay, what, what was his audience? R. Kelly audiences was fucking teenagers, 18 and older. You know what I'm saying? All his shows from like, I think 98, all the way on up, you had to be like 18 and older to get into an R. Kelly show. You see what I'm saying? So you gotta pay, he paid attention to his, to, to, to the people who was listening to his shit. And he made it a way for them to, to get in. It's creepy as hell, but still, I'm not finna let my motherfucker 14 year old daughter sneak to the motherfucking concert and be with no motherfucking R. Kelly. Sorry. Now, if I get some tickets to go see R. Kelly, <laughs> you can come, baby. Oh, bro, I'm not. But hell no, nah, man. Motherfucker been hearing stories weird, st whether right they true or false. Motherfucker been hearing these stories about this man. So, what 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 adult honestly gonna let their child go around a man that I heard you like you like kids? Even if it ain't true, it's a rumor saying that hey, you like kids, you like the, you like you like younger women. I'm cool. Nope, go find somebody else's daughter to get rich. I, I feel I, and a lot of their ass ain't get rich. They ass is bagging, and that's the issue right there. The man funds started getting low. He couldn't pay all his body bills. He started kicking hoes to the curb. Motherfuckers felt some type of way. And all this shit played out to that man losing his life. Well, he shouldn't have been doing that creepy shit if he was doing it. But if he wasn't, you know what I'm saying? It's fucked up the way he, you know what I'm saying? He, he ended. He's a good ass artist. R. Kelly was definitely talented, you know. I, I mean, I, I've been listening to R. Kelly since the '90s. I mean, it, it was uh, definitely, you know, we, you know, I remember when I was a kid. I remember hearing about him marrying Aaliyah, and and they were talking all types of shit about him on the radio, but it didn't really phase his career. It was like he married Aaliyah. They talked shit. And then he just came out with another album, and everybody kind of just forgot about it. But you gotta, you gotta think about the music he, 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 his selective music that he was putting out at that time. You can't not play good music, right? Because I don't listen to dirt, I don't listen to op music. But I got friends, and I be around females and shit. And it's certain songs they be like, oh, well, that motherfucker, 
like you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you can't be a hater. He 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 snapped on the song. Woo woo. I might not even listen to the lyrics of the song. But if you got more than one motherfucker playing that song and you getting that value, you're like, damn, that shit, that shit do smack. And you can't do nothing but tip your hat, like, yeah, that shit hit. You know what I'm saying? What fuck all that? That shit hit. And Kills is dropping that shit. You gotta think about it. He in, well, up and down. AJ number the number. Body. When a woman's fed up. Oh, he was dropping that shit. <laughs> Stop playing, man. Motherfuckers riding around in them, in them buckets on them things with somebody bitch in the passenger seat off the kill. Stop playing. They can't take themselves. Man made great music. The man made great music. That's it. Just the music part. Okay. So, you know, Chicago Drill is known for having some really provocative lyrics, you know, and Kevin Gates had a song where he was trending and it uh, it was a super gremlin remix. And he basically said he wanted to hook up with Beyonce. And then he went and did an interview where he said that she was so beautiful that he would drink her piss. Did you see that? I saw that. You know what? Kevin Gates is a wild dude. I love it. I'm okay. But I ain't drinking up. I ain't gonna lie. That's, that's to the screen, bro. Like, it, it gotta be a limit, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna fucking like, okay, but right now. Pesto, come on, man. That's like you saying you a lot of shit on your chest. Cause she Beyonce. But when you say nasty shit like that, you know, a lot of women don't like certain shit. Like, piss, what? Drink my, what? Ugh. Oh, bro, but you got the ones that are like, oh, you'll drink my what? And I really let you do it, but you know, I ain't, I don't know. Unique guy, though. He, um, bro, what I'm going to say is, he know what to say to keep his name a book. Because you know what I'm saying? He the man of love. He know what to say. The women love that shit when he say shit. That's what I'm going to say. One of the other stories about Kevin Gates that came out was that he was sleeping with a chick, and I'm pretty sure you've seen this headline recently too. He was sleeping with a chick. He brought her around his grandma, and his grandma then pulled him to the side and was like, yo, that's your cousin. And then he kept sleeping with her after he found out. Also, for real, on the real business, though, you got to think about this, though. He been clapping on bonds for so long. He been spanking that little rump for so long. That rump was probably good. Motherfucker getting that. It's too late. He already did it. I mean. <laughs> A lot of people thought that that was something he should have took to his grave. That's mercy. I, I, honestly, I wouldn't have told nobody that was my, my my girl was my cousin. Nope. And he was still. Don't he got a baby bow or something? I don't think so. I don't think so. Wow. Oh. That was pretty wild. Yeah, it was. Larry Hoover was recently in the news, and I'm I'm pretty sure you know where I'm going with this. You know, he was in the news for saying. I'm no longer a member, leader, or even an elder statesman of the Gangster Disciples, and he wants nothing to do with it now and forever. You know, how, how did you feel when you seen that? Man, look, you heard what the old man said, man. Free the old man, because you got to understand this. Yes, he walking away. So for all the people who felt some type of way that Larry said that, I'm going to just say this. Larry love his kids. And y'all better understand that for real. Larry love his kids. We got to love Larry, though. Oh, bro. Motherfucker, can't, you can't be mad because he said that. Let that man come home. Free that man. Do you think he's saying this just to get out of jail? Nope. I think he mean it. I hope he mean it. You know what I'm saying? Because if if he can show that, 
If he can show, you got to think about it. A lot of a lot of us really worship that man. Never met him, but we worship the cause he he supported, right? So for the motherfuckers who really got their head on the soil, who feel me? They really thinking like, damn, if the old man can do it, I can do it. You know what I'm saying? And the old, it just sucks that the old man doing it from behind the wall. But everybody should be happy that he threw his forks down. He ain't drop them. He just, he just, he he let them rest. It's, it's time. You know what I'm saying? He can't hold on to this shit forever. It's right. It's it's only right that he say that. It's only right. Man, like what? How old is he? At least 74, 75. No, no, no. Damn, how bogus is he with it? Like 79, probably. It's, he in his 70s. Mid 70s. Then late 70s. Somewhere in there. Think of Larry Hoover is 71. Oh, damn. He's still in his 70s, huh, bro. It's time to hang them bitches up. It's over with. It's over with. If he did get out of jail, do you think the streets or the GDs would actually listen to him or would he have any influence? For sure, red carpet. For sure. Cause you got to think about uh, like, okay, he might not have, he might not get as much as love from certain cities of GDs because a lot of GDs lost the heart of being a GD. You know what I'm saying? Because the BDs have such a huge influence right now on society. Been having it, been having it. For like, I want to say like, I, I want to get them, what, since 2013, 2014, over 10 years. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of GDs is BDs and a lot of Stones is BDs. But you got to think of but But for the most part, a lot of the younger GDs flip BD. A lot of the BDs, was GD? You gotta think about it. some of the some of the some of the top names right now. That motherfuckers worshiping, like Lil Durk. Was GD? Keith was GD. A lot of people, a lot of these people who they looked it up to all uh, was GD. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but uh, that's cool. That it, it, that's that's very unique that the old man decided to trade his pitchforks in. It's cool. Make me want to do something new. Well, Butter, man, this was a dope interview. Again, you know what I'm saying? This is, man, bro, this is an explosive interview, man. I think we're going to do it again, bro. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? I have fun coming out of here, Tyler Capone, man. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? It feel good, it feel good to sit on the platform at as big as yours, you know what I'm saying? Thank you, man. I appreciate you too, man. You know what I'm saying? It's always a good time, bro. For sure, for sure. And then, and, uh, y'all have a nice day, man. For the meanwhile, in between time, we got new videos coming out. You know what I'm saying? Captain Trey Gill, you know what I'm saying? Tune in to my boy, Captain Trey, IG. You know what I'm saying? You know, we had all the business. Yeah. Go check all that out, man. Yeah, all that shit. Love us. <laughs> I appreciate you, bros. <laughs>